Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an infinite fraction with complex numbers or an imaginary number known as i. As you know, hopefully, i is the square root of negative 1. Well, it's one of the square roots of negative 1, but we can define it as the number whose square equals negative 1 because there's only one number whose square equals negative 1. Is that true? Well, no, not really. But anyways, we get the idea i squared equals negative 1. And as you know, hopefully you've seen the lecture videos or you're already familiar with the complex numbers, but a plus bi is the general form of a complex number, r times e to the i theta is Euler's formula or Euler's form, and we're going to write our answer in one of these forms, right? But we're going to go ahead and I'll, pre I'll be presenting the solution and then uh, talk about a couple different possibilities. Okay, let me know what you think. So we have this infinite fraction, i plus i over i plus i over i plus. How do you define something like this, right? You kind of have to start somewhere, and then you got to add more terms to it. So we can kind of define this as a sequence, can't we? We can kind of say, hey, let a sub 1 be i, so i is the first term, and then a sub 2 can be defined as i plus i over something. But what is that thing? It's going to be a sub 1. And in this case, a sub 1 is i. So this is going to be i plus i over i. But i over i is 1. So it's going to be 1 plus i. Make sense? So we ha kind of have like a sequence with starts with i and then continues with i plus i. Let's 1 plus i. a sub 3 is going to be i plus i over a sub 2, which is i plus i over 1 plus i. Now, to simplify this expression, we can go ahead and multiply by the conjugate, or we can first make a common denominator, doesn't matter, it's the same thing pretty much, but let's multiply by i, i plus i squared plus i over 1 plus i. This kind of avoids conjugates, but at some point you kind of have to do it. This is negative 1, that gives us negative 1 plus 2i over 1 plus i. Let's go ahead and use the conjugates now, 1 minus i and 1 minus i. That's going to give us negative 1 plus i plus 2i minus 2i squared, which is positive 2, by the way. And this product is going to give me a 2 from sum of 2 squares. So we have negative 1 plus 2, which is 1, plus 3i over 2. So that's going to be our third term of the sequence. But how do you define this in general, right? You can kind of define it this way. a sub 1 is i, and then a sub n can be written as i plus i over a sub n minus 1. So that when n is equal to, of course, n in this case needs to be greater than 1, the minimum it can be is 2, because we don't have anything as a sub 0, right? We didn't define it that way. But recursively basically you can define a sequence the question is does this sequence have a limit and what is it right that those are going to be the questions we're going to try to answer or at least we're going to look at stuff and hopefully you'll get to answer them but notice you've seen some of the terms hopefully that kind of gave you an idea so i can write uh, the sequence like i and then one plus i and then the third one is just 1 plus 3i over 2. You can also write it as 1 half plus 3 halves i and continue in this manner and see what kind of terms you're going to get from here. But let's go ahead and look at it from a different perspective. Suppose this converges. Does it? That's a good question, right? But suppose it does, then how do we solve such a problem, right? So we want to know what this converges to or what this equals to. But this is an infinite expression. So let's go ahead and set this equal to x. I don't know what it is, so I'm going to call it x, right? That's what people did in the past. So I noticed that x starts with i and then continues with the plus i over i plus i over i plus. And notice that this piece right here is the same thing. i plus i over i plus i over i, so on and so on. So many i's, right? 
so many eyes. So this is the same as X. Hmm. This is actually a general strategy that will help you solve pretty much any problem of this type as long as it converges. All right, let's see. From here, we get the following. I plus I over X equals X. Again, there are lots of ways to solve this problem, but let's go ahead and multiply everything by X because that seems to be the easiest. Don't you think? Multiply by X, multiply by X. Awesome. Let's go ahead and distribute XI plus X cancels out. X squared. Uh-oh. We ended up with a quadratic equation. How do we solve it? Easy. We're just going to put everything together like this. Right? This is going to be our quadratic. And this is actually a full quadratic. And there's something called the quadratic formula, which is super nice. Don't you think? We have a cubic formula. We have a quartic formula. But unfortunately, there's no quintic formula. There's a group of quintics that are solvable, which are called solvable quintics. There are some transformations, so on and so forth, but it's a big topic. Anyways, so how do we solve this quadratic? Let's use the formula. X equals negative B, which is I, plus minus the square root of B squared, which is I squared, minus 4AC, but C is minus I, so it's going to be plus I, divided by... Wow, interesting, right? Let's check our work. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4i. I'm glad I did check my work because I forgot the 4, right? All right, great. I know some people are like, yeah, you forgot to write the 4. Now, let's simplify this. I have i squared plus 4i. What is that? i squared is negative 1. So I can write it as x equals i plus minus negative 1 plus 4i divided by 2. Here's the thing. This equation has two solutions, right? So what does that mean? We have to evaluate the square root of something. How do you find the square root of negative 4 plus 4i? That negative 1 plus 4i. That would be a good question, but here's what you can do. You can replace the square root with set it equal to a plus pi, and then square both sides, and then hopefully you can solve for a and b, right? This should give you negative 1 plus 4i equals a squared minus b squared plus 2abi. From here, a squared minus b squared is negative 1. 2ab is 4, so ab is equal to 2. Can we solve for this? Sure. We can probably just square both sides and write this as a squared b squared equals 4. And then we can replace a squared with b squared minus 1 here. And that gives us b squared times b squared minus 1 equals 4. Set b squared equal to c. c squared minus c minus 4 equals 0. And from here c becomes negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That will be 17 and divide by 2. So that's the c value, but c is equal to b squared at the same time a squared, right? Well, here's the thing. We kind of have to think about what would happen. For example, if b squared is equal to 1 plus root 17 over 2. By the way, b squared cannot be 1 minus root 17 over 2 because that's negative. So we can only take the positive root. And if b squared is this one, then a squared is just going to be 4 over b squared, so it's going to be 4 times 2 over 1 plus root 17, which is 8 over 1 plus root 17, or root 17 plus 1. If you multiply by the conjugates, you're going to get root 17 minus 1 over root 17 minus 1, which is 16, goes into 2 twice, and yes, you're going to get, for a squared, you're going to get the conjugate. Let's go ahead and write this as square root of 17 plus 1 over 2 so you can see the conjugacy better these are going to be the a squared b squared values but to find a and b we still have to take square roots and now put them in here that's going to give us the radical square roots right so it's going to be like this the square root of square root of 17 plus actually i'm supposed to write that a first right square root of 17 minus 1 over 2 plus the square root of square root of 17 plus 1 over 2 multiplied by i, but this is just 
the beginning, right? It's just this part, and then you're going to add I, so on and so forth. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care, and bye-bye.